Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. Happy first official day of summer to everybody out there. In today's video, we'll be talking about Tropical Storm Brett brewing across the Atlantic Ocean and more updates on the tropics as well as the eastern Pacific side starts to heat up as well. And then big storms erupting with significant severe storms through this weekend across especially the Great Plains and into the upper Midwest. West and then extreme heat does continue with record high temperatures, especially across the southern plains. We'll get to these details later on in today's video. But first, looking here at Tropical Storm Brett, this is across the Atlantic Ocean, and it is kind of more of an organized slash disorganized tropical storm right now. This is the infrared satellite imagery, and Brett is just to the east of the Lesser Antilles or the Windward Islands here, and this is pressing to the west. All also, we are monitoring an 80% chance of an area that the National Hurricane Center has outlined just to the east of Brett. If this becomes named over the next few days, that would become Tropical Storm Cindy. So definitely something to keep an eye on over the next few days. And looking at the water content here across the tropical Atlantic, it is rather warm for this time of year, especially with an El Nino. Usually we see a lot of these cooler waters start to emerge across the Atlantic. Well, not this year. This is kind of an anomaly, so something to keep an eye on as we go deeper into this El Nino and through fall with the hurricane season. But looking here at Brett, so today Brett is just to the east, like I said, of the Lesser Antilles and the Windward Islands. We have Cindy trying to develop just to the east of there, taking a similar path initially as Brett as well. And then as we go through late week, Thursday into Friday time frame, June 22nd into the 23rd, Brett will cross over the Lesser Antilles. Antilles and into the Eastern Caribbean here bringing some impacts with strong winds, heavy rainfall, and some storm surge at times as well. And then we have Cindy likely forming just to the east of the Windward Islands, taking more of a northwest track than Brett does as that Bermuda High starts to shift a little bit further to the north, and that would bring Cindy just to the north and east of the Windward Islands here by late this weekend on Sunday, June 25th, and that would kind of curl it back toward the northwest. The GFS model is also implying the same thing. So we use two of the main operational models, and basically they are laying right on top of each other. The European model and the American GFS model is essentially in the same position with Cindy, just to the north and east of the Windward Islands as we go through later on this weekend. Now turning over to the eastern Pacific side, there is a 40% chance of a development area here just off the Mexico coast in the eastern pacific basin over the next seven days we'll continue to watch this it is rather warm in that area with the water temperatures and the anomalies here so this will be an area of concern moving forward so right now today not really expecting any development initially here through really this week and we see that going through this weekend there's some signs of some tropical waves crossing over the central americas and into the eastern pacific basin here by later on this weekend but i think it's as as we get into the middle portion of next week, as that ridge builds over Mexico and into the southern United States, underneath that we'll see some pressure falls and then we'll have a tropical storm, if not a hurricane, starting to form in the eastern Pacific according to the European model, and the GFS model is even more bullish, putting a couple of hurricanes across the eastern Pacific Basin. So things are definitely heating up across the tropics, not only in the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf, but also in the eastern Pacific Basin as well. So we'll continue to monitor both of these oceans as we go forward. But closer to home here today, we have a very active weather pattern starting to churn up as well. We have that trough across the Pacific Northwest with the right exit region of that jet across the northern plains and that subtropical jet that has been relentless over the past several weeks continuing to emerge across the southern plains and into the lower Mississippi Valley that will continue through the better half of this week going into this upcoming weekend and what this means is we have more severe weather chances ahead a slight risk here across a large area from southeastern Wyoming western Nebraska down into eastern portions 
sections of Colorado, western Kansas, western Oklahoma, and into Texas here as we go into this afternoon. And it is fairly concerning. We could be seeing some hurricane force wind gusts, 75 plus miles per hour into western Oklahoma and northwest Texas, just to the west of the Dallas Fort Worth area, places like Wichita Falls, getting up toward the Lawton, Oklahoma region as we go into later on today. And it's that area as well across the western Great Plains here from Wyoming down to Texas. We'll have to watch for significant hail. This could be two inches or larger in diameter. So over golf ball size, definitely a possibility. And the tornado threat today is maximized up here as a 5% shading across southeastern Wyoming, far western portions of Nebraska, and extreme northeastern Colorado later on today. As we go into Thursday, the, the synoptic pattern does not change change too much, so we'll have more marginal to slight risks of severe weather on Thursday across many of the same areas with that slight risk here across southeastern Wyoming into northeastern Colorado. As we go into Friday, that shifts just a little bit further to the north, so that includes parts of the Dakotas getting in towards more of Nebraska and northwestern Kansas by Friday. And Friday is an interesting day as well. The instability values will be climbing stronger further to the north than we've seen it a lot here over over the past few weeks, you could see instability values climbing to 2,000, 3,000, perhaps even 4,000 joules per kilogram here by Friday afternoon. And you can see a complex of storms trying to develop by Friday evening into Friday night up here across the Dakotas and into Nebraska as a low pressure cyclone starts to turn up across the northern plains by Friday afternoon. And this will bring appreciable rain chances this weekend, finally for the northern states here. And by the time we get into Saturday, this could bring us another chance of severe weather, this time a little bit further to the north, including parts of the Midwestern regions here in the Missouri Valley. This is for eastern South Dakota, parts of Minnesota here into Iowa, getting into eastern Nebraska toward the Kansas City region there into eastern portions of Kansas and northern Missouri That'll be the area highlighted by the time we get into Saturday, June 24th. And again, the same principle here. Instability will be building further to the north, up to around 4,000 joules per kilogram up here as far north as the Omaha, Lincoln, Nebraska region. And on the northern periphery of all of this unstable air, we'll have another complex of storms dropping from northwest to southeast across the Midwest and into the Missouri Valley by Saturday night into Sunday morning. So if you live in Des Moines, Moines, Iowa, down through Omaha, even as far south as the Kansas City region on Saturday, I would definitely pay attention to the weather forecast as severe weather will be possible, if not likely, moving forward. So definitely something to monitor there. Now talking rainfall amounts. Total rainfall accumulation today through your Monday. This is going all the way into early next week on June 26th. The heaviest of the rains will be felt up here into the northern plains, especially into North Dakota and northern Minnesota, and then across the mid Atlantic states and down into the southeast and we'll kind of take you through these areas as well. If you live into the Fargo region, Bismarck, all the way south and west toward Rapid City here definitely seeing a good swath of drenching rains of about 2 to as much as 5 inches worth of rain going through this weekend. Even some decent rains down here into western portions of Nebraska, northeastern Colorado as well. And then across the mid-Atlantic states, down into the southeast, including the Carolinas, Virginia, on up here into Maryland, New Jersey, Delaware, parts there of eastern Pennsylvania. We'll be seeing widespread drenching, drenching rains through the weekend and into early next week with one to as much as three, if not four inches of rain and some isolated spots occurring across those areas. So those are the two main focusing areas we're seeing for the heaviest of the rains, definitely watch out for the flooding concerns moving forward across those regions. Then the next big story is the extreme heat wave. This week, this ridge is going to be locked in place across the Great Plains and the upper Midwest. And on either side of the ridge, that's where we have the pressure falls, where we have a stronger trough across the Pacific Southwest here toward California. And another trough across the Southeast bringing unsettled weather with all those rain amounts that I was showing you as well. This is actually an omega block pattern that will be in place through this weekend 
And look at this, guys. Widespread excessive heat warnings and advisories across portions of the Southern Plains. And about 80% of Texas is covered in this type of heat alert. So definitely something to keep in mind because you know Texas gets hot in the summer. But when you start seeing excessive heat warnings for Texas, you know it's hot out there. And we'll show you that just here right now. So looking at the heat index values today, yeah, look at that, guys. Widespread 110, 115 heat here. Fahrenheit across Texas from Dallas Fort Worth back to Abilene all the way south here toward the Brownsville Corpus Christi region that continues through the Thursday time frame if we have a couple thunderstorms develop you can see a couple holes here in towards the uh, heat index values that would suggest that we have some rain cooled air across those regions into Thursday and same thing into Friday but it looks like the heat will prevail as we go even into this weekend on Saturday as well so the heat is going nowhere anytime soon soon and in fact if you love summer heat this is the forecast for you I promise you that because going through the end of June on Friday June 30th the heat is going nowhere across the southern United States in fact it may even build a little bit further to the north across Oklahoma Kansas getting into Arkansas and Missouri here as well by the time we get in towards later on this month and in fact previewing your early July 4th holiday plans yeah excessive heat is a high probability across east central Texas even a moderate probability up here into the Missouri Valley and the Arklatex regions as we get closer toward that July 4th holiday so definitely something to watch out for as well so looking at precipitation trends during this period it will be active with the troughs across the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains over the top of this ridge and especially there into New England and down into the mid-Atlantic states but underneath the ridge forget about it don't even don't even mention the rainfall it is not going to happen down here across the southern plains lots of sunshine lots of heat lots of sinking air so you're going to be seeing dry conditions especially into New Mexico and Texas including the Rio Grande Valley through the end of the month and in fact looking at the long range it will remain dry down here in of the southern United States for the most part going through the July 4th holiday with the heaviest of the rains across Montana, the Dakotas, and then across portions of, New, of the Northeast, New England, and down into the Mid-Atlantic states as we get closer to the July 4th holiday. Well, if you like today's video, be sure to press the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel if you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics. This is the channel for you. Subscribing is is absolutely free. And like I said, you get all of this detailed weather breakdowns every single day on this channel. Be sure to like the video as well. If you have not, it definitely helps out by pressing the thumbs up button below the video to disperse this to as many people as possible. I do appreciate that as well. Also, if you want to follow me on Twitter for additional weather forecast updates here, I do post on that platform fairly frequently. Follow me down below in the description on Twitter at HWeather420. I definitely appreciate that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching today today's video everybody make sure to leave a like down below um, subscribe like I said also leave any comments questions and concerns below I'll get to those later on today and hit the notification bell because if we do have to go live for severe weather live streams or the tropical live streams we will be doing so later on this month and into early July as well so definitely be sure to press the notification bell have a great rest of your Wednesday everybody a great rest of the week and I will see you all in the next video